left the video in the one. Just go and... Uh, <laughs> How you feel? Good. Bula. Thank you, uh, resident representative of the World Bank, your excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished guests, and my fellow Fijians. Bula Binaka, and a very good morning to you all. We don't really need a film, even a brilliant, brilliant one like this, to remind us of the threat we all face from climate change. Once again, Fijians are mourning the loss of some of our loved ones in an extreme weather event. And I know you will all join me in sending our condolences and our love to the families and friends of the five people who died in the terrible flood in the West over the weekend. Easter is meant to be a time of joy, not suffering. And aside from these families, a great many others again suffered the devastating impact of water damage to their homes, their businesses and vehicles, as well as many hours of inconvenience caused by block roads or flooded bridges. While uh, mercifully we were spared a direct hit from tropical cyclone Josie, the death toll from the flooding still exceeds that of the cyclone Eva, uh, Evan at the end of 2012. We had no deaths here in Fiji back then, despite the Category 4 winds. And Cyclone Josie reminds us that even if we are spared the destructive winds, the torrential rain these cyclones produce can be just as much of a killer. I want to issue an appeal to every Fijian today to treat these incidents of flooding with the absolute seriousness they deserve. Do not attempt to cross swollen rivers and streams. Stay out of the flood waters altogether. Don't try to drive through water covering the road because as we've seen, your vehicle can easily be swept away with tragic consequences. And parents, keep your children from playing in or around flooded streets creeks and drains. We all have a duty of care to our fellow Fijians. So if you see someone behaving irresponsibly, do what you can to remind them of the gravity of this situation and the threat. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are now at an almost constant level of threat from these extreme weather events that are becoming more frequent and more severe because of climate change. And while as a nation we are striving to build our resilience and adapt to the frightening new era that is upon us, Fiji is also doing what it can to address the root cause of these events through our leadership of the Global Climate Negotiations, COP23. Whatever the challenges at home, I continue to place the greatest importance on my work as COP23 president. And it is to get the message out loud and clear to the entire world about the absolute need to confront this crisis head on. As a matter of the utmost importance and urgency, we must limit the global temperature increase to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius, above that of the pre-industrial age. It is the only way to prevent catastrophe for the whole world, and especially for vulnerable nations such as our own. But Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very serious challenge in getting that message across and let me lay it out in stark terms this morning. Even with the commitments that have been made under the Paris Agreement of 2015, our nationally determined contributions or NDCs to reduce the emissions of carbon dioxide, they are woefully inadequate. Instead of limiting the global temperature to 1.5 degrees, they could in fact produce warming of at least 3 degrees by the end of the century. And that would spell untold suffering for our planet and, of course, for our kids. For humans, animals, plants, all living things, countless species of animals and plants would become extinct. Human beings would suffer heat stress, food and water, food and water shortages and more illness as tropical diseases like malaria move into cooler regions of the world. It would be impossible to maintain current standards of public health and the devastating impacts would threaten the global economic and social order, not least by creating vast numbers of climate refugees. 
As COP23 president, my formal duty is to encourage the global community to fully implement the provisions of the Paris Agreement, to hold the increase in global temperatures to well below 2 degrees Celsius, and to pursue efforts to limit the degrees, limit increase, sorry, to 1.5 degrees. As you know, I've been encouraging everyone as a COP president to embrace 1.5 degrees, the most ambitious Paris uh, target, as soon as possible. But I repeat, we are nowhere, nowhere near being able to achieve that with our current NDCs. And that is why the next stage of the COP process is so important, the Talano Dialogue, to raise the ambition of our NDCs. Deeper cuts in carbon dioxide emissions, much deeper, so that we can finally begin addressing the gravity of this threat to our entire planet. The Talano Dialogue, presided over by Fiji and Poland, is a centerpiece of COP24. So Fiji will be an important force in the continuing global battle against climate change long after our formal presidency of COP23 ends in December. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is critical for the whole world that the Talano Dialogue succeeds, that we use the Pacific concept of inclusive consultation devoid of finger-pointing to lift our collective carbon emission targets, our NDCs, and give this uh, effort the urgency and the importance it, it uh, requires. So far from me winding down my COP uh, activities as the year progresses, I will in fact be stepping up the fight. The week after next, I will be in London, marshalling the 53 countries of the Commonwealth into renewed action at Chogham, the Commonwealth of Government uh, meeting. These leaders represent 2.4 billion people, a third of the world's population, many of them in vulnerable nations. Whether it is flood-prone continental states like Bangladesh, drought-stricken nations in Africa, or small island development states like those of us in the Pacific or the Caribbean. And these leaders are powerful agents for change. I'm also placing the highest importance on the Global Climate Action Summit in San Francisco in September, where my COP23 Special Envoy for States and Regions, Governor Jerry Brown, is bringing together all the components of our wider Grand Coalition, state and local leaders, businesses, civil society, uh, scientists and students. Of course, somewhere in all of this, I also have uh, to fight an election here at home. But I know that the Fijian people understand the importance of what I'm doing on their behalf because they realize that this is a fight for our very survival, for our people in the here and now, for future generations, for our land and our ocean, and all we hold dear. And they are standing shoulder to shoulder with me in this struggle. Getting people to be more aware of the climate threat is a vital part of our nation's education which is why the Fijian launch today of the virtual reality film, Our Home, Our People, is so important. Virtual reality really is the best way to bring home the reality of the impact of climate change on the Fijian people. A 360 degree experience that is unlike anything else you will have ever seen. When you put on the virtual reality headset, it is really like being there whether it is the Bailey Memorial School in Barotu, the uh, communities of uh, Nambukandra and Namarai of Hunisabisabi uh, in the Konrabe, the place that is really at the center of this film. It brings to life the struggle of the people of Ra in the Konrabe to build their resilience to climate change. It reminds uh, every Fijian who will see it that we are coming together in our spirit of velomani, of caring to support each other and confront the climate change. And it reminds every person who sees it uh, the world over that the climate struggle isn't only about scientists or experts, but ordinary people like those Fijians who feature in the film. It was one of the highlights of the Fijian Pavilion at COP23, not only for the many thousands who passed through it, but for me personally. And I urge as many Fijians as possible to try and see it because it is genuinely brilliant. And I want to warmly thank the World Bank 
that was behind this initiative, both for the production itself and for the way you work so closely with the communities involved. I'm especially pleased that uh, the people who feature in the film will be able to see themselves in virtual reality when you take it on tour to Nambukandra, to Namarai, uh, the Bailey Memorial School and Hun Sab Sabi. As well as some great characters and uh, spectacular scenery, our home, our people contains a powerful message communicating some of the key findings of our climate vulnerable assessment, uh, vulnerability assessment carried out by a team from the World Bank and a team from our Ministry of Economy led by Nilesh Potash. This assessment finds that by 2050, Fiji's annual losses due to extreme weather events could reach 6.5% of GDP, with more than 32,000 people pushed into hardship every year. It also finds that uh, over 10 years, an estimate 9.3 billion Fijian dollars will be needed to build resilience and the capacity to adapt to climate change, almost equivalent to our entire GDP for a year. Yet what this film does above all is to give the raw statistics, statistics sorry, a human face and remind us that we all have an important role to play in our response to climate change. Every Fijian, including our young people. I want to say how much I appreciate the participation in this morning's event of the students and teachers from St. Anne's Primary, Lamy Primary, and Yatsen Primary Schools. They showcasing the models uh, they produce as part of their own studies of climate change. And I want to say to them for their own commitment on behalf of us all. As we clean up in the affected areas of the tropical cyclone Josie, I urge every uh, Fijian to join in the struggle to build a more climate resilient Fiji and to support our global effort to tackle the root causes through our presidency of COP23 and our joint carriage of the Talano Island. I also encourage as many of you as possible to come down to the Suba City Library and enjoy the virtual uh, reality experience. The story of our home, our people, and their own climate struggle. And I have the great pleasure to formally launch this wonderful film in Fiji. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you. Prime Minister, uh, ministers, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and students. Um, first, I, I would like to join in expressing the European Union's condolences uh, for the deaths and the damage that has been wrought in the West yet again. It underlines the importance of the subject that we address today. But I am delighted to be here today to ex experience this virtual reality film, Our Home, Our People. The aim of the film, as the Prime Minister eloquently uh, said, was to portray the reality of living uh, with climate change in Fiji and the Pacific and to ensure that its message was clearly heard at the COP negotiations in Bonn and beyond in the wider world. Our People, Our, our Home, Our People is a high quality film in its own right and sends that story and message in its own right. However, showing that film through the medium of virtual reality created a particularly winning formula. It succeeded very dramatically in transporting the viewer into the reality of living with climate change and taking that reality into the heated COP negotiations in Bonn last year. Our home, our people, is also a very effective as its story appeals to any community across the globe that is experiencing the challenge of living with climate change. It is not a story of them, but it is a story of us all and was particularly evocative as I watched it in that regard. It is as relevant for the countries suffering at the vulnerabilities in Europe as it is in the Pacific. This global appeal is exactly what the spirit of Talanoa Dialogue seeks, stories that will spread naturally and spark discussions and accord that will be needed if we are to make any type of difference on the huge challenge that the Prime Minister very eloquently outlined to us today. The European Union is strongly committed to creating spaces for such dialogue and for creating spaces for action. In this regard, we are proud to have partnered with the World Bank to produce as part of the climate vulnerability assessment an in-depth analysis of the potential impact of climate change for Fiji's economic development. 
The findings, as the Prime Minister outlined, are sobering. However, we hope that such a diagnostic helps focus the efforts and bring a sense of reality to deciding on the path towards a resilient low-carbon economy. We have undertaken similar studies in the European Union, and it is only on the basis of political commitment to such studies with specific figures, with a specific measure, that we're able to bring the political decisions to bear to make the changes necessary to defeat the threat that is climate change. Before closing, I would like to make a political remark on Fiji's role and the EU's broader cooperation with Fiji. Every co co uh, presidency is unique, but Fiji's presidency is particularly so. As you took over the presidency, the Paris Agreement came under attack. The agreement is, without doubt, the single greatest achievement we have taken to date to tackle climate change. But in its own right, we've heard this morning, it's inadequate in its own, in its, on its own. We need more ambition. But even that document was being put at risk just weeks after it had entered into force. It was the leadership of Fiji, the political commitment of your country, and quite simply your hard work, that have kept that agreement alive and moving forward. The work is clearly not complete, but at this midway point, the European Union wants to express its thanks, and I believe on the behalf of all of the international community, to your sterling efforts to date, and to indicate our fullest and deepest commitment that the EU will stand with you in your continued efforts as COP president. Thank you very much. Vanaka Vakalevu. Honourable Prime Minister, Ministers, Your Excellencies, colleagues, friends, boys and girls, Bula Vinaka. First of all, I'd like to express our sincere condolences to the families who lost their lives or lost family members this past weekend in Tropical Cyclone Josie and to those who may have had damaged property in this terrible cyclone. It stands as a terrible reminder of the toll taken by the natural environment on the people of Fiji. And the disaster in fact drives home why we're here today to mark the return to Fiji of the production of our home, our people. The film premiered at COP23 last year, and we're truly delighted to have worked with the government of Fiji in its production. It's critical to open the eyes of the world to the plight of countries battling the effects of climate change. I congratulate you, Prime Minister, in your role as President of the COP for putting not just Fiji, but the Pacific and island states across the world at the top of the global climate agenda. We need real, significant and measurable commitment by the world's largest economies to not only reduce their carbon emissions, but towards greater investments in adaptation. And in the process ensuring that the countries that have done almost nothing to cause climate change are better armed to protect and defend themselves from it. To everyone here today, as well as those who are considering coming to the Suva City Library, to watch this filmed over the coming weeks, I urge yourself to immerse yourself in it. As the Prime Minister said, take the time to transport yourself to Barotu, Namarai, to Nambukandra and Buni Savisavi, into the lives of what would appear to be a group of ordinary Fijians. But as you'll see, they are anything but ordinary. They are extraordinary. They are extraordinary neighbors, extraordinary friends, community members, mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters. They are, in a nutshell, extraordinary Fijians. And we hope that you will enjoy meeting them through this movie as much as we did in its making. But I should emphasize that the movie is not a singular piece. In, in fact, central to this production are the key findings of the first ever Fiji Climate Vulnerability Assessment, which was also launched at COP23. The preparation of the assessment, which you'll see copies uh, of lying uh, on the tables in the room, was an intensive effort by the Fijian government and, a, and with support from a team from the World Bank. And it addresses specific questions that arise in many countries when considering the impact of climate change, such as what are the threats to major development sectors? 
what progress has been done in last years, what are the priorities and the costs of climate resilient actions, and what can be done now in terms of the investments but also from policy changes and planning to reduce the increased risk of climate change to develop in, in 30 to 50 years. The assessment benefits from a great deal of quantitative data, including the detailed household survey that Fiji has completed. In fact, very few countries have such detailed data. And with that data, it formed the backbone of much of the analysis and has sought to capture the social as well as the economic cost and benefits of climate resilient actions. The report also addresses social vulnerability and the link to poverty and thereby enables a prioritization of investments that will minimize the social costs of disasters. The interventions build on significant effort by the government of Fiji over the last 10 years to reduce and prepare for climate and disaster risk. And the findings are critical input into the enhanced nationally determined contributions or what's known as the NDCs. The proposed interventions do have a significant cost, as the Prime Minister mentioned, about $9 billion for GM dollars over 10 years. They'll help Fiji move towards climate resilient development and have benefits that persist far beyond the decade of the initial investments. For us at the World Bank, these are important findings and we hope that the report will serve as a resource to help identify how we can best support efforts by Fiji and other countries towards more climate resilient development. The report and the movie production are designed to connect with sort of two elements of every person that drive decision making. The report is designed to connect with the head and the virtual reality production with the heart. And with more than 600,000 people across the world having now watched this film in person or online, it has certainly been a powerful an effective way to get decision makers to understand the findings of the climate vulnerability assessment. The entire project was a significant piece of work by a number of people and I wish to say a sincere Vinaka Vakalevo to a few of them who are here today and some of them who are not for all their support in making it a reality. First of all, to the Minister of Economy, Ayaz Sayed Kaum, who actually came up with the idea of the climate uh, assessment at the IMF World Bank meetings in Washington last year. The Ministry of Economy, in particular Nilesh Prakash, the Director of Climate Change, and his team, as well as John Connor and the entire team from the COP23 Secretariat, worked long days and nights to complete this work while also juggling an extraordinarily packed schedule in the lead up to COP23. So I congratulate all of you for your hard work in delivering this and to the European Ambassador Julian Wilson and your team, thank you very much for your support for this through the ACPEU Natural Disaster Risk Reduction Program. Ambassador, you and your team's support is very highly appreciated, Vinaka. And also to Alana Holmberg, standing right there, who is the key photographer on this and the production team from S1T2 for throwing themselves into the production. Many, many thanks for what you've created. And, of course, to the communities of Nambukandra, Namarai, Guni Savi Savi, and the students and staff of Bailey Memorial School in Barotu for their incredible generosity in opening up their hearts and their lives to our team. For this, we are sincerely grateful. These communities have shared deeply human stories of Fijians standing tall. Many of those in the production are already seeing the impacts of climate change on their daily lives and yet they're coming together, as the Prime Minister said, in a spirit of velumani, of caring, to respond to climate change with strength, with resilience and with action. And everyone involved in this work, the team of more than 50 people, deeply believe that in today's world we all need more velumani. The project is very much a vehicle for sharing this uniquely Fijian value with the world, and we are thrilled to finally bring it home to Fiji. I hope you enjoy it. Inakavakilevo. <laughs> Uh, according to water pollution. Water pollution is usually
carbon emissions that are released by factories into the water, uh, which is uh, polluting our beautiful marine resources. There's uh, illegal dumping done by us into the ocean and leftover nettings from, uh, from fishermen that will mm -hmm. trap our marine, our beautiful marine um, resources. And uh, unsalvageable boat is we have the ferry that had sunk. Mm -hmm. That can be an example. Mm -hmm. Also with incinerators. Incinerators, they bring out a lot of carbon, which destroys the stratosphere. Uh, if the stratosphere is destroyed, ultraviolet radiation will enter the Earth, causing more disasters. That's how the North Pole is melting. The factories, vehicles, and volcanoes. Change and climate change that coming up the Thank you.